Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine nutrition research digested for you. I'm your host, Clayton Chastain, and today we have with us Dr. Johannes Goldman Madsen, an associate professor of swine nutrition at the University of Copenhagen. So Johannes, I know you've been on the show before, but before we get started, would you mind giving the audience a short introduction about yourself as a reminder? Yeah, um, I uh, come from uh, Denmark, where in, I have my uh, Master in Animal Science from University of Copenhagen and a PhD in uh, uh, pig nutrition from uh, University of uh, ETH, uh, or ETH Zurich and Aquascope in Switzerland. And um, yeah, now I'm working with uh, Monogastric Animal Nutrition at University of Copenhagen as Associate Professor. Gotcha. So I understand up in Denmark, you've been doing some work on I guess, digging deeper into the biological mechanisms that can determine a pig's feed conversion ratio or feed efficiency. So would you mind sharing a little bit of the research that you guys have been doing there? Yeah, together with uh, colleagues from uh, Aarhus uh, University and other collaborators, uh, we have uh, had a trial or experiment where we had the possibility to measure the individual feed intake uh, by the use of some advanced feeding stations. So we had... Uh, all the way from in the nursery period, we have uh, the individual feed intake, and then uh, also in the grow or finisher period. And uh, what we did was that we had um, three different uh, dietary treatments with uh, low standard and high protein, uh, group protein level. And within each of these groups, we categorized uh, uh, some low and some high feed efficiency uh, pigs. And then we have look, looked extensively at the um, the different growth performance parameters, uh, which have also been presented at the EAP conference in uh, in Lyon uh, this year, um, and what we see is that uh, expectedly the the high feed efficiency pigs they have higher birth rate, uh, or the higher the high birth rate, higher body weight uh, throughout the period. Um, but what is interesting is that when we look at the dietary treatment, uh, we see um, a change in the later growth finisher phase where the Pigs on the low protein diet, they actually uh, start to uh, grow faster than the, the high protein uh, fed pigs and also have a, a better feed conversion ratio. So we have discussed, or we're currently discussing if that has to do something with compensatory growth or if it's actually the pigs supplied with the high protein diet that are over oversupplied with protein. So that was more like the the, the growth performance and, and we have also looked a lot into the the eating behavior so we have a lot of data on uh, feeding duration and uh, meal frequency and there we also see that uh, at least on numerical basis that the ones uh, fed um, high protein have a uh, shorter feeding duration and lower meal frequency and the same pattern with the high feed efficiency pigs uh, but what we are really interested in to look into the biological background. So we have uh, at uh, 150 kilos, we slaughtered or euthanized all the um, a lot of the the pigs, and we have sampled uh, mainly in the small intestine, both um, tissue samples and also uh, a mucosa scrape and gut content. And so we have looked into uh, the microbiome composition and also the blood metabolomics profile to see if there are distinct. Uh, patterns or profiles between the high and low feed efficiency pigs. So far in the preliminary uh, analysis, we haven't found anything yet, uh, but given that the um, the feed efficiency is uh, based on both uh, average daily gain and feed intake, we might look uh, deeper into that because you can achieve uh, a feed efficiency, a high or a low feed efficiency in, in, in multiple ways. Um, and we will also look more into how much, uh, I mean, the average daily feed intake uh, and the uh, good protein intake, because that could also affect uh, at least the microbiome. Um, furthermore, we, we, we're also currently analyzing the transcriptomics or the metadynamics of the small intestine and tissue, because we uh, have some expectations that the uh, maybe number of or activity of nutrient transporters might also be different between high and low uh, feed efficiency peaks and also be um, affected by the, the crude protein level. Um, yeah, so that's that's what we are currently uh, working on. And we, we see this experiment as more hypothesis generating than testing. So we, we think that uh, based on, on what we will find, we, we can hopefully design uh, and, and do some other experiments so we can um, see if we can improve the, the feed efficiency because that is 
indeed very important, both when you think about the, the farmer's economy, but also the nutrient excretions to the environment and, uh, of course, also the climate impact because the pig's, uh, the pig's, the pig's carbon footprint is, is mainly within the feed. Do you think that it could be possible that we could manipulate the microbiome uh, based on bacterial exposure or genetics to increase the feed efficiency? Yeah, I think it will be extremely difficult. I mean, we would, we would have to look closer at the, the composition, uh, even though there is no difference as we see it now. There might be still be on tendencies or on a numerical basis some differences. I, I find it uh, difficult to believe that it's possible to, um, I mean, to, to really uh, uh, manipulate it with, uh, for example, a probiotic or or a feed ingredient to an extent where you can really see a difference in feed efficiency, but yeah, you, you never know. Uh, and of course it's also, it's really uh, complex in the, in the, you know, in a dynamic manner that, that, that will change uh, also um, due to the, the group protein uh, level, for example. So I think it will require some very advanced experiments and, and um, more detailed analysis. Um, of course it would be very nice and easy if we could just, uh, Manipulate, but we would need. Uh, we would also need, I mean, an idea of what is the good microbiome for for feed efficiency. Um, there have been, of course, a lot of uh, research into what is the good uh, microbiome for for gut health, especially around weaning. But that's also extremely difficult to answer because there is a. I think there is a you know widely um, recognized theory that the, the more diverse the better but you can the, the diversity between birds for example is extremely different so you cannot say that one composition is better than the other so i guess my next question is since this a lot of this has just been um fairly preliminary research what do you think or what do you what are you thinking will be the next steps for your team and um continuing this line of research yeah we will look in if, if if we should categorize the the pigs differently so not maybe only due to feed efficiency but maybe also I mean, average daily gain separately and feed intake separately and also the, the crude protein uh, intake. Um, and then we will also look into if, if uh, the pigs that were um, high and low feed efficiency in the nursery period, are they also um, high and low uh, uh, feed efficiency in the growth finisher pigs? That's something our collaborator from Sigus Innovation, they will look at into. Um, yeah, and then the, the, the transcriptomics, I'm very much uh, in the... In the, in the in the small intestine, I'm very much looking forward to. And we also have some uh, done by the Kielanowski Institute in Poland. There is a lot of uh, uh, more analysis in, in uh, pancreas enzymes and, and so on. Also in the gut morphology. Um, yeah, I must also mention that um, the microbiome was done by some colleagues at University of Copenhagen uh, Science Faculty at KU Food. And the metabolomics was uh, done at the University of Queensland in Australia. So we have a, a lot of good collaborators uh, who are looking into their specific um, expertises. When it comes to raising healthy animals, you need more than the right solutions. You need the right partner who brings decades of industry expertise and a global team to put that knowledge to work for the advancement of your operation. At Fibro Animal Health Corporation, we are proud to work with you as your trusted partner. Gotcha. Well, we'll for sure be looking forward to seeing that research when it comes out, but I appreciate you coming on the show and sharing what you have so far. Yeah, thanks a lot. You're welcome. Yep. And everyone else, thank you for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt podcast. Please visit us at swinenutritionblackbelt.com and don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the next episode. See you next week. Hey, everyone. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show and share it with us, Feel free to email the details about your research to hello at wisenetics.com. The journey of a hero has challenges, battles, and villains. But after the fight is won, new paths are open. And it's time to catch our breath and move forward. More powerful and super than ever. And you, hero of the swine industry, do you have your cape ready to take new flights? Swine Talks 2023, December 6th and 7th. Together, 
we're more super than any obstacle.